The southeast winds have greened up the bays and the trout bite is on fire. The shad are flipping area everywhere down south and the white bass are crushing it. So ice down your cooler, gas up your boat because it's time for the Texas Insider Fishing Report. Welcome to the Texas Insider Fishing Report. Presented by Yamaha. Welcome back to the Texas Insider Fishing Report. We're your hosts, Captain Rick Murphy and Bree Gabrielle, guiding you into the month of May. And Rick, the fishing already looks promising, and so did your recent trip with Matt Reed in the Lower Fresh region. Tell us all about it. I am going to tell you I'm about sure it. You, you know, will. Bree, I flew there on Thursday, and certainly we fished on Friday and Saturday. The weather was a little challenging, northwest yeah. winds, and down at Lake Falcon, that's really not the, the optimum kind of fishing or winds that you want but matt was able to catch a really nice fish See him. on the first day nice. of fishing and uh then the next day I, I was there to try to match my personal best and which Look is at eight you. eight fourteen Ooh. that fish was a little shy of that but the you point is happy? you know what else brie what 150 oh, fish look at the bruise, bruise. <laughs> i have a bruise right here from setting the hook oh i don't feel bad for you from the rod but uh, it's unbelievable too many fish. 150 fish in two days is just wow. crazy it was the best time ever that's amazing well that sounds like a fun few days on the water i know i'm jealous dave are you as jealous as i am yes. maybe not the bruise part but you know. yeah i am of course i am course i want to go over am. there you know hey well, we're going to talk about amberjack tonight though so. Another bruise maker. Yep, they make <laughs> they, exactly. Sweet. They're the true bruise maker. <laughs> true bruise maker. Yeah. All right. Well, Mother's Day is this weekend, and what better way to celebrate Mom than bringing her to the fish? So let's see if our captain in the Fish Bites Upper Coast region can help us out with that. Go for it, Carl. Hey guys. Well, this week we're going to talk a little bit about trout to start out. The trout bite moving into May here has been steady in the Upper Coast, pushing strong from that 71 degree water in Sabine Pass right down to West Galveston Bay. The bite is on. There have been schools of bait around the shell reefs, jetties, and all the way out into Sabine Pass. We've been getting reports of some really big trout out there. So keep an eye out for the birds. Working these bait schools, this is gonna be your first sign you're in the right spot. A good live bait option this year has been shrimp on a popping cork, as always. If you're gearing more towards artificial, a four inch bass assassin shrimp on an eighth ounce jig head, is getting it done right now too. Now when you spot these birds, look at the direction the bait fish are moving. Try to position yourself out in front of them. This really gives you an upper hand, the best opportunity to throw to these fish and present your bait right where you want it. It's all groceries from there folks. And uh, Shane with a couple nice trout, I think we just need to follow him around if we want to find trout. So uh, moving over to sheep fed, another species we have in the upper coast. Uh, you know, we talk about swimming with the rebels. The sheep head is also known as the convict fish. And these guys are so distinctive with their vibrant black and white bars, sharp little spines and sharp little teeth look like humans. Sheep heads are, are very sneaky and like to stay around the jetties and the rock piles and reefs as well. They seem to, they seem to stick around the hard to fish places for anglers. You know, they, these guys feed on small shellfish, barnacles, keeping those little teeth sharp. When you're targeting these fish, I would use a small live hermit crab or a small live shrimp. These convicts cannot resist a tasty little hard crab. I would set your rig with an eagle claw, one ounce razor sharp bait holder hook or a J hook. Now I would not use a treble hook for these fish. They snag easy when fishing in this structure in this pile, in, in the piles. And uh, I like to use a good little spinning reel like the Conflict 2 by Penn. It's been a great little contender for us. Remember to stay on your game though. Chief said we'll steal your bait in a heartbeat, and you don't want to be fished on credit. Today we got a picture of young Jesse with a nice little sheep's head. Oh, that's a cute right. picture, bud. All right, tell us about the groupers. All right, here we go back to our home <laughs> in the deep. So we started out grouper fishing the other day, and in my usual routine, in the 300 to 400 foot range of the rock piles, we had some real nice fish. We bumped out to 600 foot, had some larger fish. I uh, talked to a lot of the captains in the areas, and like ourselves, the weather has been rough, like you just said, Rick. But the fish are biting. Now, these fish love to hang around ledges, deep potholes, offshore wreck, uh, reefs, and wrecks. 
And we fish for the smaller grouper. We like, I use a drop loop with about a hundred pound monofilament tied to an eagle claw, eight out circle hook. And I go 20 to 40 ounces of lead so I can get down to the bottom as quickly as possible. Now I prefer to use live bait more for a grouper. Live shad, piggies, little bar jack, any of these fish seem to do the trick. Uh, just make sure you hook these fish in the back. For me, it's always really increased my hook, my ratio when baiting this way. And today I've got a picture of something I've never caught before and I'm really jealous. Brian has a fireback grouper today. A fireback grouper, huh, Pretty. never heard of that. Is that, uh, we'll I'll have to check on that, man, that's cool. All right, tell us what else you got uh, going. Hey, like you were talking about being bruised up, Amberjack, first of, uh, first of the month, opened our 2021 amberjack season. Uh, these fish are so much fun to, to catch because you never know how long that arm work is gonna last. Fish offshore structure, we start two to 300 foot range. Uh, smaller fish, up to 40 pounds. Uh, we, we rig with a diamond moy leader from three to 500 pound test. Now this sounds real heavy and it is, a heavy three-way. We clip two to four pounds of weight at the bottom of the, of the three-way and up to a 16 aught Eagle Claw Circle C hook. These fish range in our area up to 120, 130 pounds. And when you're fishing near these rig legs, the last thing you want to do is have them wrap up in there and chafe you off and lose a big fish like that. Now these fish are easy to mark on your Garmin. And the trick to catching them usually is you only want to drop your bait down about half the depth. If you're in a hundred foot of water, drop to about 50. Let it ride there for a while. These fish will come up and eat. And when you see that rod bend and it looks like it's about to break, he probably just hooked a big amber jack. And I had a picture here today of me bringing one of them over the rail. Ooh, the house of pain, there he is. All right, bud, thank you so much. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the R&R &R Tackle Hotspots from the Upper Coast region. He says that in short, you wanna try those sheep's head around the jetties, rock piles and reefs. And don't forget those hard spots that where the fish live. Try small fiddler crabs on a small eagle claw bait hook. And then offshore amberjack, offshore structure in 200 to 300 foot range. Try an r, &R 16th ounce jig tipped with some fish bite squid strip. What do you think about that, Bree? Have you tried those, that flavor specifically? Yes. How's it taste? It tastes like Mashed potatoes. potatoes. Figured. Yes. All right, let's check in with our guide in the Upper Fresh region where Lake Allen Henry and Tawakini are the places to be this weekend. Talk to us, Johnny. Hello, Rick Marie. Well, we're going to start out on some big old bass over at uh, Lake Allen Henry. Uh, the high winds have made bass fishing challenging there, to say at least. And these late season cold fronts, they've delayed the spawn on the Allen Henry, but the bass are finally moving on the bed. So, uh, LAH, we call it, always starts later than lakes in East Texas, but it, they continue to put out some large bass each year. The, the largemouth bass are the most popular species in this reservoir, and it has produced uh, quite a few of lunker-sized fish, 13 pounds or larger. It's got quite a few fish entered in the Toyota Share Lunker program. So in the past, Lake Allen Henry was also stocked with uh, Alabama spotted bass when the reservoir was filled, and still have these some of this strain there. Uh, the spotted bass, grow much larger larger and faster than the native spots and the Alabamas can reach uh, four plus pounds so good fish there. There are numerous spawning areas uh, on the lake, uh, Great Creek, Little Great Creek, uh, Rocky Creek, Red Branch, Sandy Creek, and Gobbler Creek. Those are your major creeks with good spawning habitat. The lake extends uh, a length of 11 miles, has approximately 56 miles of shoreline there. Uh, the, the rocky brush line structure all over the lake got a lot of steep 45 degree banks and that accounts for uh, all the shoreline. It's very narrow. It's a beautiful clear water lake. It's just a great place to go. The, the flooded timber, cedar and mesquite make up most of the fish holding cover and that's what makes topwater fishing there so good. The bass can suspend in the deep trees and ambush those topwater lures overhead. So bass fishing on Lake Allen Henry is fantastic according to guide Philip Poole with the Gone Fishing Guide Service. The bite is on and the fish are just now hitting the beds. Water temperature is running around 61 degrees and Philip and customers are catching fish on 10 inch worms, sinkos, spinnerbaits, and topwaters. Philip says they're about three weeks behind where they should be, but due to the high winds and cold fronts, it's just that. The lake is stable now and it's time to go catching. Uh, this bite lasts all the way through June and it'll only get better day by day. 
The numbers inside of the bass he and his clients are catching is staggering right now. The bass are spawning and the big ones are moving on the nest. Sometimes Philip has his son up, Jared Poole from Hill Country Hammer Guide Service, works with him and they're helping catch uh, customers catch plenty of personal bass. Jared is a specialist at sight fishing. He's installed a platform on his bass boat to allow the customers to fish from an elevated platform. Uh, this allows much better visibility when targeting those bedding bass and the customer has a better opportunity to see and catch and finesse that big female into body. Philip says they offer customers a choice strictly of hunting for giant bass or going after the numbers. So, sight fishing is an art and it takes a lot of experience to set up correctly. And the present, then the, you got to present that lure just right at the right place and the right time in that nest to make them bite. There's usually a sweet spot, we call it, where the bass go back to time and time again. And when you can present your lure just right, you'll have a chance to catch a real big one. Having a good guide to teach you how to fish for bedding bass is worth the investment. And if you hit the right day, it could be the best fishing day of your life. Here's a picture of Jerry Poole with a 12.60 bass he caught out of Allen Henry. So the big ones are still in there biting. Wow. Next up, we're going to move over here to uh, Striped Bass over at Texas uh, Twockery. Uh, man, Bat Cartwright, they just continue to put the fish on the table. Everything on that lake is biting right now. You just have to hit a day when that wind's not too high to navigate safely. The stripers, the hybrids, the white bass, they're all in play at this time. The heavy slaps and plastic swim baits are the top two producing baits. Uh, look for the schools bunched up off the main lake structure and it's a rodeo when you find them. The Texas limit for white bass is 25 per anger with 10 inch minimum length. Just be sure that you can tell the difference between a white bass, a hybrid, and a striper when they're small because the, all the small fish are very similar in appearance. The limit on hybrids or stripers is a total of five fish aggregate of either or both species and must be a minimum of 18 inches. So, Usually the same type of lures catch all the species, the heavy slabs and the silver chartreuse and the white, they work great and also a swim bait such as a bass assassin sea shad on a three quarter ounce jig head will catch all three species. May is an excellent top water month also and nothing's more fun than catching bass fish, I mean the catching the big stripers like bass on top. Matt continues to put his customers on limits of stripes almost daily. And here's another picture, it's there every day of a recent catch this week in customers and that's a table full of cleaning he had. Hey, May is a great fishing month, upper fresh region. If you've been waiting on better weather, it's finally here. The month's usually got much more stable weather. So time to hit the water and let's catch some big ones. All right, thank, hey, you. thank you so much, Johnny. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the upper fresh region. Johnny says, Lake Allen Henry, the bass are on the beds, biting plastic stick baits, swim baits, and plastic worms. May is an excellent top water month, <clears throat> and the spawn will continue all month. And then Lake Tawakani, the fishing for sand bass hybrid stripers is on fire. Look for the birds and the schooling fish, paddle tails, swim baits, and slabs are working best in 18 to 24 feet of water. That's on down there. Yep, and he's not kidding about uh, Matt Cartwright on Tawakani. He yeah. is the best. He's the man. Yes, that's who was in our little b-roll there and who I caught on my stripers with. All it was right. a good day in the water. Stripers. Stripers. We're visiting the Garmin Middle Coast region next on the Texas Insider Fishing Report. But first we're checking in with the workbench guru Dave Farrell to see what rigs and techniques are getting us through the weekend. Dave. Well we're going to be talking about using the big guns and trying to catch some of those big amberjacks out there gonna have to pull really hard to get one of them up because they we'll don't like to come up. We'll bruise for AJ's. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll be back. The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Fenwick. Bahio. Fresh eyes for a rich life. Garmin. Plot your paradise. Fibertex. Leaders in fiberglass fabrication and repair. Sportsman's Adventures, Fishing for Adventure, Penn, Let the Battle Begin, and Skeeter Performance Fishing Boats, Eat, Sleep, Fish. Yamaha's reputation for saltwater reliability is driven by the 4.2 liter V6 Offshore's 97% reliability and overall performance. Reimagined with new advantages like built-in digital electric steering for incredible responsiveness and exhaust rerouting for more powerful reverse thrust. 
the legacy of the reliable Yamaha 4.2 liter V6 continues, now more refined and capable than ever. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Pump up the performance in all of your engines. Kick your gas into gear with StarTron. For the Bay and beyond, team up with the best and rule the Bay in a Skeeter. Proven with 20 consecutive NMMA Consumer Satisfaction Awards. And now, through June 21st, you can launch into your summer with sizzling rebates of up to 2500 Versatility, control, performance, and design. The Skeeter Summer Sizzling Savings Event is happening now through June 21st. Visit your local dealer or online at SkeeterBoats.com. Skeeter, it's more than just a boat, it's a lifestyle. Have you ever felt your heart pounding while feeling the power of a tarpon in the Florida Keys? Or experience the changing colors of a mahi as you bring it on board? Whether it's in the Bahamas, the Florida Keys, Guatemala, or the Florida Everglades, Murphy's Law Sports Fishing has the ability to guide you to the fish of a lifetime. To book your trip today, call 305-246-0673 or go to murphyslawsportfishing.com. So as you heard before the uh, break, we were actually going to come over here to the workbench, talk about rigging techniques on yes, how sir. to catch amberjacks just opened in Texas. So. Yep, May 1st, and it lasts for the whole month, and then it comes back in August, I think. They open up again for a little short season. But, uh, you know, the amberjack is a very powerful, strong fish. It's a jack, for one thing. All jacks are pretty strong. But the amberjack, is because he's more streamlined, He's got a nice big fork tail. He's very powerful fish. So when you're when you're fishing for him, you got to have the right gear. You know, you, you can't just go out there and, and mess around with him because a 50 pounder, a 50 pound amberjack will pull most fish, you know, backwards through the water. Um, so anyway, and they're, and they're often found around structure. So that's another problem. You know, they're always going to be found in artificial reef, a, a wreck, uh, oil rig. You know, they are structure-oriented fish, and usually above the structure. But you start fishing on the bottom all all the time. You know, when you're whenever you're jigging or whatever. Um, most of the time, they target them in Texas around the oil rigs, and what they'll do is they'll get a live bait. They love any kind of live bait: a blue runner, a big pin fish, a little tuna. You know, a, a hundred pound amberjack will inhale a, a three pound tuna fish. So you're gonna want to get a 50 pound outfit like this, this pin 50, you know, it's a two speed, uh, which will help a lot. You know, this one's spooled with 80 pound test uh, mono and a hundred pound Mamoy uh, leader. Probably, you know, you want 10 feet or so, uh, just in case he, he gets wrapped up in something, you might be able to get him out. A nice big trocar, this is a trocar nine knot. You know, with right. a little offset on it, this an octopus hook, it's right. snelled on there. Um, what you really have to worry about with your hooks is once the guy grabs the leader, the pressure goes from whatever your angler could hold to now what's in the mate's hand. And your hook has to be able to not straighten out when a hundred pound amberjack starts swimming on it. So, you know, the bigger, thicker hook that you use, you're gonna be okay with. This is, you know, you want a six foot rod, a short rod, because that gives you the leverage. If you're using a really long rod and you get a big fish on the other end, you can't really lift him. But when you have a nice short rod, you can really put the power to a, a small, I mean, to an amberjack or any kind of fish, actually. Um, you know, a, a short rod is a shorter lever and it makes it easier on you. It's a better fulcrum and you, and you can really crush a fish if you have a short rod and, you know, short pumps. And you're gonna have to have a good belt and one with a gimbal in it. You know, don't yeah. don't go cheap and get one without a pin. Right. You know, you got to have your rod's going to have to have a gimbal on it. You want you want you want your rod to have a gimbal and you want your so the two can marry correct. together. And that and that keeps things from twisting. Right. And when you got a lot of pressure on a fish, you don't want it to be twisting around cuz it, you know, you end up fighting the rod and reel. Right. And that and that pin really and it's helps. It's hard enough without. Correct. Correct. <laughs> so good so good that, point, Dave. Yeah, you always want to make sure you have, you know, and and if you have a, if you can get a shoulder harness, Afco makes a really nice shoulder harness. 
Don't be afraid to put one of those things on and clip in because it makes it 10 times easier when you're using those big live bait and you're catching the bigger ones. So if ones. you don't have live bait, so what do you suggest? A well, big a jig? Big, a big jig or a swim bait really works well. You want something like five ounces or something because you're fishing in deep water. You know, you're usually starting fishing at 150 feet you know, all the way out to 400 feet. And you want to start on the bottom. You drop that thing all the way to the bottom. You want something that'll get down there pretty quickly. Uh, like if you're using a, 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 a flutter jig, you don't want to use one of the long ones. You want to use the little short fat one that'll yeah. haul butt and Zip get down, down to the bottom. And then you work it, you know, work it up about halfway up the water column and then drop it back down. It's good to have a nice, you know, if you use your Garmin and get a good picture of where these fish are. Because usually you'll see them suspended above the wreck. You know, usually about halfway up. That's what they say. If you're if you're in 150 feet of water, 75 feet up, that's where you'll see them circling that wreck a lot of times. But anytime you can use a big, you know, at least a five ounce swim jig of some sort, uh, you know, with a big fish paddle tail on it, that's gonna that's that's a great bait to use as well. You just put it all the way, flutter all the way to the bottom, and then fast jig it up halfway, drop it back down, keep and repeat. Keep doing it until yeah. one snack. Let that snacks paddle on tail jubilate. Right. And you can use, you know, a good 6,500 spinning reel is what you want to use, you know, maybe with 50 to 80 pound braid on it, you know, because, you know, you're going to have to put a lot of pressure on the fish. Uh, this is the <coughs> Fenwick 8 foot extra heavy spinner. Yeah. And boy, it's got super power. I've been and using it. And that's what you need for you know? tarpon fishing. That's what you're going to need to I mean, lift those, those, uh, those Pull that <laughs> hammer jacks up. I mean, you it, know, this rod will hurt you. Yeah, a lot. You know, the, the last time I fished for him, we were fishing in 400 feet of water, and we were catching 80 to 100 pounders. Oh. And after the third one, you know, I hooked it up, and I said, "Oh man, I think I'm on the wreck." And I knew I wasn't on the wreck. The mate said, oh, let me see. And he grabbed a hold of it. And he goes, no, you got a fish. And I go, no, you got a fish, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> that one's yours. Because I'm not messing with that thing anymore. Uh, I'm you better remember that trick, Bree. <laughs> because, yeah, those, those things, will, they'll, they'll, they'll kill you. They'll kill you. You know, if you're going to be getting a live bait, it's a really good idea to, to use a live bait that you're fishing from that place. You know, you can catch those live baits on the wreck that you're on. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, use some R&R. &R, uh, Sabikis which are really good. You know, those are the 30 pound, so, you know. Yeah, they got plenty of heavy to catch those right. those hard tails or blue runners, whichever you prefer to call them tonight, yeah. Bree. You've got a fish? <laughs> no, you've got a fish. I like that. I think I'm gonna use that next time. <laughs> I get my second AJ. I think there one's good go. enough. All right, the sweet breeze of spring has sprung in the Garmin Middle Coast region, so let's see what your Mother's Day weekend in the Garmin Middle Coast region is looking like with Captain Bank Grimes. Tell us all about the welcoming changes, Bank. All right, happy Mother's Day to all our mothers out there. And our, our sweet southeast wind appeared this uh, for the first time in a long time this spring. Uh, those fish, they just bite better in the southeast wind, probably due to a low barometer. We get greener water and, and higher tides. Our tides finally swelled this week, which gives us a lot more real estate to fish. That new water has pushed loads of shrimp and shad and mullet to the shoreline, and the trout have followed. Uh, Drifting East Bay uh, has been good on live shrimp under a popping cork shelling about five foot of water has produced trout to seven pounds that we have been uh, gingerly releasing. Uh, winds have gusted at times to 25 knots or better uh, and the water clarity has uh, remained good with those higher tides. The only way to consistently catch uh, these fish are in, in the middle uh, along the middle coast you know is to, is to wade this time of year. Uh, water temps are 75 degrees and most of those waders are have uh, kind of shuffled and uh, thrown the the waders to the side and they're starting to wade wet. West Matterwater Bay continues to produce uh, trout on bass assassins and a few on top waters. That incoming tide uh, has begun around daylight. It's peaked after lunch and uh, it's perfect for wading the flats. Right now there's about one to two foot above normal tides on the flats. In Freeport, the uh, higher tides, they push trout to the reefs in Christmas and Bass Drop Bay. Live shrimp have worked uh, off the edges of the shell. The Surfside Beachfront has been good when the weather allows. Jetty anglers are also, uh, uh, you know, they're starting to find those trout tight to the rocks on live shrimp. Uh, oh, uh, coastal ocean water temperatures have been uh, about 76 degrees, so that's perfect for trout this time of year. In Rockport, guide Red Price, he's been uh, waiting to protect the shorelines with top waters and, and soft plastic. Uh, waders along the Allen's Bite area have thrown small top waters and corkies. Uh, photo there is a nice five pound trout that uh, we released this week while uh, drifting in the middle of East Matagorda Bay and that 
that fish went about five pounds. Nice. Redfish action mm -hmm. has been uh, good in Bass Drop Bay on live shad. When you can find them, some reds have hit small topwaters and bass assassins. Water clarity has been stained, but the reds have uh, found those loud plugs that we're throwing out there. There's always reds at the jetty, uh, but sometimes it's tough to get them to hit a plastic. Lately, those green tides have, have made it better uh, at our jetty with a uh, little little Mirler, little Johns, and the small uh, Bass Assassin Sea Shad. Guy Michael Quebec, he's found good redfish and stiff winds. He's uh, running the reefs parallel of the intercoastal uh, near East Matagorda Bay. He's using live shrimp under a mid-coast uh, popping cork. Those swollen tides uh, have made every back lake a player. Uh, we've been in Oyster Lake in Matagorda, Crab Lake, Lake Austin. Best baits have been live shrimp, but some of them, if we make long drifts over the middle uh, of the lake, uh, they, they, you know, we've caught big, big redfish. Back lakes of Port O'Connor, they're holding redfish. They're doing the same thing. Uh, the Port O'Connor jetty is hot as well on shrimp and crabs in about 35 to 60 foot of water out there. We'll go offshore. More and more boats are venturing offshore with, with that magical mark of a 70 degree, you know, coming in, in the Gulf. Uh, the winds, they've been stiff most most days, making it bumpy, but uh, we're, we've had a few tranquil days. We're about a month away from the Federal Red Snapper opener on June 1st, but that weight had stopped a lot of our uh, state anglers from catching good fish out of Freeport and Matagorda uh, in state waters inside nine nautical miles. And then there's a lot of sharks and bull reds about two miles off the beach. Still not a lot of sargassum showing up, but a few kingfish have been caught lately. Uh, so, and a few dolphins are starting to show as, as well. So, uh, it's been a good week. That's our uh, report for the uh, Garmin Middle Coast region. Uh, please keep practicing good judgment and please take care of our fishery. All right. Great report this week, Bink. Appreciate all the effort on the offshore stuff. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at the mirror lure hotspots from the Middle Coast region. He said the trout are good at Freeport Jetty on live shrimp under a popping cork. And then the redfish are good on Oyster Lake on live shrimp and small top water spree. All right, well, here is your weekly reminder that if you would like a chance to win this exact 1952 Chevy 3100 hot rod, all you have to do is purchase tickets at ccaflorida.org forward slash hot rod. Brought to you by Captain Rick. Can't <laughs> I can't win it believe you're letting this go. In it. <laughs> Why are you letting this truck go to I, someone like me? I got I got something else I got in mind. Oh, okay. In the Star Charm Middle Fresh and Alvey Lower Coast regions, the weekend is looking pretty promising. So stay hooked and we'll be right back with your reports and this beautiful truck. Yep. <laughs> the Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Contender Boats, always in the game. Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin, the best lures, period. Alvy Reels, a better way to fish. Berkeley, your fish, our science. Murphy's Law Sport Fishing. Book your trip today at murphyslawsportfishing.com. And Penn, let the battle begin. The Yamaha VMAX V6 SHO continues to deliver the level of performance that pro bass and multi-species anglers demand. Underneath a bold and aggressive new look, an upgraded charging system with 40% more charging power meets the amped up demand for today's advanced electronics. The VMAX SHO, raw power, reliability, and exhilarating performance for every angler who loves the sport enough to invest in the best. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. We are the Fish Bites Nation, and this is your invitation. So grab some fish bites and get busy casting, because you can't join the nation without doing the catching. Ask for Fish Bites or Fish Bites Fight Club lures, or visit fishbites.com.
Today's power pole tip, we're talking about the power pole spikes. The power pole spikes come in two models. Ultralight, like I'm holding here, which is perfect for kayaks, canoes, paddle boards. The Holocore technology keeps this spike extra light and easy to use in those smaller vessels. The HD model, which stands for heavy duty, of course, is great for your technical pulling skiffs, but it's also good for all your beach going, sandbar going, pontoon boats, party boats, and even up to big contenders. I go buy sandbars from Sarasota to Key West and I'll see boats using two or three of them. The neat thing about that is you're avoiding any use of anchors, ropes, or chains, and it's holding your boat tight and secure. And also, they can be paired up with Micro, PowerPole Micro, and if you purchase the PowerPole Micro along with a spike, HD or ultralight, PowerPole is going to stroke you a check for $100. And that's today's PowerPole tip. Those are very helpful at the same bar. Oh, they are. We have one. Just stick it right it. in there. Just stick it in there and tie it off. Exactly. All right, we're checking out a few lakes with some hot bites this week in the Starchon Middle Fresh region. So, Matt, tell us what to look forward to on Toledo Bend and Sam Rayburn, just to name a few. I sure will. You can uh, definitely put those power poles to use in the Middle Fresh region right now. We've had a lot of rain, a lot of good shallow cover in the water. So a lot of great shallow fishing happening right now. Uh, I'm going to start with a report from uh, Lake Palestine this week. Uh, Mr. Thurman Selman with Bass Specialty Guide Service actually uh, won a tournament over there recently. Uh, so I want to say congratulations to Thurman for that. Uh, and he was kind enough to fill me in on the winning pattern, which was fishing in uh, around grass in uh, shallow spawning coves. And he and his partner were uh, throwing that bass assassin fat job that I talk about all the time. Uh, they were using the watermelon red color and they were rigging it wacky style. So hooking it in the middle, kind of finesse fishing it a little bit. That fat job is just a certified bass catcher. Y'all need to check it out. Uh, it's a little different than your average, we'll call it stick worm category. And uh, they just bite, man, it's great. Mr. Thurman also gave me a report on uh, his home lake, Richland Chambers. He said that the fish in there has picked up some recently. Uh, what he believes is the last big round of spawning fish has moved up to do their thing, but they're also catching a lot of post-spawn fish at this point. And uh, he says those post-spawners are suspending around the docks, and then they're also on the points coming out of those coves and flats, and the best baits for them have been uh, wacky rigs, uh, sinking worms, and then square bill crankbaits as well. The water temp there, he says, is in the mid to upper 60s, and the water's fairly clear and the lake is level full. So pretty good conditions there at Richland Chambers. Sounds Down like. here at Toledo Bend, uh, we've jumped up over full pool level now with all the recent rain we've had. So we're kind of in, in flood conditions. Uh, but when that happens late in spring like this, it can be a lot of fun to fish because that flooded water that's coming in is fairly warm. Uh, it's anywhere, you know, from the mid 60s all the way up to the upper 70s on a warm afternoon and most of the fish are post-spawn now, and so they're feeding. Uh, and it just makes for a lot of, a really fun bite, uh, a lot of big fish being caught on a variety of shallow baits right now. My go-tos are a frog, a swim jig, or a soft plastic swim bait. I really like the full-size Bass Assassin Boss Shiner right now in the Houdini or the Chico's Radier color. Uh, it's just a big male, and it draws those big fish out of that heavy cover. Um, so it's a really fun way to fish right now. But if you do get a day after one of these big rains or something kind of post front, anything like that, high barometer where the fish just won't chase anything, that's when you're gonna back it up and go to that fat job that I was just talking about. You can fish at Texas rig or you can fish it wacky style and watermelon red is my go-to color for that. And real quick, I've got a photo here for you of Danny and Katie Beltran. They're from the Dallas, Texas area. Uh, and they've got a, a bass there that's not a giant, but it's a very special fish nonetheless. That is Katie's very first bass she's ever caught. Hey, go Katie. Recently. Yeah, it was a fun deal. And uh, I think she caught more than Danny that day, so it was kind of fun to watch her whoop up on him. Yep, they always now, do, bud. Uh, <laughs> moving over to Sam Rayburn, uh, it's kind of more of the same. Uh, flooded conditions there have a lot of the bass up in that thick stuff. Uh, so those same baits that I was just mentioning work well. Uh, but the key is just to fish the conditions. And that goes for really all of these lakes right now because there's so much change going on with changing the seasons. But especially on Toledo Bend and Rayburn right now because they 
they both have just endless options for deep and shallow covered fish. And so the one thing, though, that seems consistent over the past month or so on Rayburn is that most of the bigger fish there are coming from offshore spots. Now, the depth uh, range is a little wide. You're looking at anywhere from four foot on some of those offshore flats to as deep as about 16 foot um, out there. And so the old ball and chain, the Carolina rig, kind of dominates for covering a lot of water in that depth range. And then a crankbait can be good too. So just kind of keep an open mind right now in the middle fresh region. There's a lot of different patterns working, um, especially on Toledo and Raver, just fish the condition. And we're gonna finish up real quick with a, a kind of summarized crappie report on Sam Raven and Toledo Bend because they're very similar right now. Uh, the fish is getting better and better for numbers and for size as those fish continue to make their way out to the deeper areas, about 15 to 30 foot, and they're still biting those jigs. So y'all come see us and catch them at these tasty things. All right, thanks so much, Matt. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the Middle Fresh region. Matt says that we're going to Bass are biting a variety of baits shallow right now, but large swim baits are his favorite, and there are also offshore bite building up in some of the lakes, so check for them out deep. The crappie are ganging up in the deep water, and the jig bite is fun. All right, the Alvey Reels Lower Coast Region has its priorities straight when it comes to offshore and inshore, so let's hear from Captain Chad Kinney and see where we should start first. Go for it, Chad. Well, we're going to start first with the inshore again, and. Um, we're going to talk about a, out of Aurora City, which is right between Port Mansfield, South Padre Island. So Aurora City and Port Mansfield, the redfish are still holding up really shallow up on the east side. We've got long flats down here, so they're holding up in that one to two foot of water. And the trout are getting those deeper grass beds still in that four to six foot of water. They're still holding this pattern, and uh, that's what we're looking at. So on the redfish, like I said, they're really holding up real shallow there. Basically, they get up on the very shelf, look for some of those uh, bait to move in the mullet out of Port Manson and Royal City. You're out there really early, and the, the mullet's the key thing. You gotta find the mullet. When you find the mullet, you know, get off and wake fish like we talked last week, and that's the best bet. If not, you can drift through them, be good. But they, uh, they've they been holding, holding on that bait, and as the day goes on, they are gonna fall off. They'll get in that two to three foot of water, but your best shot to get them is up early in the morning. Uh, use some lighter tackle when you're up there like that. I like using the 60 Alvey reel. I spool it with 20 pound diamond braid a memory fluorocarbon leader around 25 to 30 pound leader works great like that tie a loop knot um, on that if you're using some top waters especially like the top dog junior mirror lure or if you're throwing some plastic saltwater assassin sea shad with a paddle tail works really good if you're up real shallow and you're using the plastics and paddle tail retrieve it really really quick you almost try to um, almost outrun those redfish they're going to attract some faster and they're going to hit it and they move out later in the day if you're getting up there and you're getting to waist deep or in that two three four foot of water then slow down your retrieve and hit the sand pockets and work that soft plastic through that, through that area. Moving to the next species, we're going to talk about black drum. We don't do it a whole bunch. We talk it probably two or three times a year, but it's a lot of fun. It's a good table fare. It's where a lot of commercial product is at your restaurants there. It's a lot of fun to fight. Um, right now, they're up in the land cut. Work those drop-offs. Work with fish bites. They love that. Or fresh dead shrimp on the bottom. Um, you can also use like Carolina rig, which works well in that deeper water. Um, and if the current's not too bad, then you can just go straight with an eagle claw jig head, quarter ounce, and catch uh, the fish bite right to it. Or if you have the shrimp, you know, take the head off the tail and you even peel it open to get more of a scent in the water, and that'll help you out there. Um, if you're using the cut, like I said, cut of strip lights, make sure you go to that three quarter ounce jig head to keep get it down in the water a little bit better. But the thing is, just leave it sit there. Don't jig it. Don't work. Just kind of let it sit. These drum are going to feed on the bottom. They root around. They're going to pick it up, run a little bit, set the hook and you'll, you'll have a game on there. It'll be a lot of fun. Moving to offshore, red snapper still remains really good in state waters, and now amberjack season's open. So guys like to fish amberjack, now it's time to get out there and go for your big reef donkey out in that deeper water in the wrecks and the oil rigs. The state water snapper fishing, it says still remaining good, solid in that 50 to 90 foot of water. Uh, we're still having some northerns coming in, uh, which will mess it up from time to time as far as clarity and some currents. Um, so for, you know, in the current conditions, I would go to like the three to five ounce trocar jig head, get a little heavier to get to that current. And the, those bigger fish you're holding in the middle of the water column. Blue water's not really in quite yet, um, so you might have to attach a double a double rig on there, just basically a mono, 130 pound mono, uh, mamoy, and then do two loop knots and a bank weight on the bottom. Uh, put some bait on there, or put your uh, fish bites on there, it works really good also. Eagle claw circle hooks, I, I like using the 12 to 13 knot. The reason being, which I said before, when they hook them right on the side where they're always going to go, you can roll that hook out a lot easier. If you get a smaller one, 
you can't get it through there, you have to get a tool to help you roll it out. The bigger ones with a bigger gap in it, they're going to hook them all the time, work straight. Uh, once the blue water starts to move in, definitely you can lighter lighter weights and get some smaller hooks and also on the jigs would be better. Moving to Amberjack, like I said, it's open. A lot of guys like doing this for the fun and the fight. Um, these guys put up a huge fight for, for, for any angler. Uh, vertically jigging in the middle of the water column, uh, which might be you know 150 to 200 feet in the middle of the water column if you're 250 to 300 foot of water. But a uh, setup for that, the best thing I like using is a pen spin fisher or a battle. You get 6,500 on that, or you go to 7,500 even, and you load it up with a 60 pound diamond braid with 100 pound fluorocarbon, or even a little bigger if you like to, on your monoliter, and then tie the trocar eagle claw jig on it with a big strip of uh, fish bites and then kind of split the middle of it, make it kind of take that tail look to it, it'll flutter even more, attract even more bites in my opinion. Helps with the presentation. And if you're, you know, you're vertically jigging through that with your pen, if you feel a thump and you miss them, don't keep on reeling up. Make one more jig, drop straight back down. You know where that water comes at, keep continuing it. So I've got a picture up here of a big monster amberjack we had. Um, it was actually oh from last year, those things are 100 pounds right there. So get up there and get some. Ouch. Oh, I'm so sorry for those guys, man. All right, Chad, thank you so much. We're going to read the shallow sport boats hotspots from the lower coast region. Chad says the water remains high out of the lower Laguna Madre, so look the, for the redfish up shallow in the flats early and then some trout in the deeper water later on in the day. And then offshore. Offshore remains good for red snappers and state water with some kingfish starting to show up, Bree. Just looking at that picture makes me tired. Oh. All right, we've got our lower fresh region guide uh -huh. coming up after the break, but I spy some great Mother's Day gift ideas over at the workbench with Dave you Farrell. You should know, Mama. <laughs> well. I picked up the spider stuff. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good Mother's Day. It's good for me, though. It's spider away. I don't like spiders. Uh, moms don't like spiders either, uh, babe. I, I get my wife to go mom. kill them. I do not like spiders. I will take that from you tonight. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> the Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Ameritrail. Load. Launch. Relax. Fenwick. Turn on the bite anytime. Tie on a mirror lure. Diamond Fishing Products, our reputation is on the line. R&R Tackle, from our tackle box to yours. Berkeley, your fish, our science. And Startron, cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems. An entirely new species of extreme predator is moving offshore. The Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO offshore outboard. Extreme big block thrust and power in the industry's first direct injection four-stroke. Quiet, efficient, powerful, and proven Yamaha reliability. More than an outboard, it's a fully integrated power system. The all-new Yamaha V8 XTO Offshore. With over 100 years of heritage, Alvi Sidecast Reels allow you to cast over 150 yards with up to 900 yards of capacity. Alvi's state-of-the-art drag and 22-inch retrieve rate per wine is perfect for any surf challenge. Alvi Reels are manufactured to best practice standards and are in fact so robust that the Alvi also comes with a 10-year salt and sand warranty. For more information, go to alviusus.com. New products, and we got everything from glasses to hooks to frogs and spider repellent. Spider repellent. So you know, where would you like to start, I, sir? I, I could bathe in that stuff. No, we'll go ahead and start. <laughs> we'll start the Casarina with the Bahio Casarina glasses there. 
because it's Mother's Day coming up and these are really nice frames for, for all the moms out there, or even just the ladies who is not a mommy yet. Um, that's the, uh, the rack Tita split Mahi style frame. They come in four different styles and all the, all the uh, glass uh, lenses, you know, mirror, uh, blue mirror, gray so, mirror. Yeah, so we said this before, you know, the cool part about the Bahio is that we took the blue light technology. Everybody's so concerned about what the computer screens and our phones and right. our iPads and all of that stuff is doing to our eyes, especially the younger generation. So Bahio came out with a blue eliminating blue light right and the sun creates over 22 percent blue light yep. which is the most light that it takes so we're eliminating that and we're finding that the lenses are even more crisp and more clear than super before. clear super crisp they're really nice so bahio.com yeah go there and try bahio sunglasses bahio sunglasses.com yeah i better yeah. make sure i get that right exactly. i could get fired correct all right next we have a z-man leap frog it's a hollow body frog they come in two two and a, two point two Two five inches and two point seven five inches, almost three inches. That's the big one. They also come in popping frogs or a swimming frog, and that's a swimming frog. Uh, if you turn it over, you can see it's got a big keel on the bottom. Right. It makes it go back and forth. It does a really good back and forth motion. It's got a really nice double hook in there. The collapsible body when it, when the fish eats it, it collapses right down, and that double hook will get him. It's got really nice silicon uh, legs and skirt on there. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, very. Very cool little... I've always wanted to pull on a frog's legs. <laughs> Why not? Right? <laughs> They're good to eat, right? <laughs> For sure. Yeah, well, also they have the 3D eyes and the high quality paint job on there. Anyway, zmanfishing.com to get that. Right. Now, I'm very excited about this. I didn't even know Starbright made this, but like Bree, mm -hmm. I don't like spiders a mm -hmm. bit. And uh, I've actually keep my boat in a carport. It's an open carport and the spiders get all around the, the corners and the edges and you know they're always eating those little uh tiny little gnats and mosquitoes and stuff and after they get finished with them pff, they kick them out of the 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 little webs up there and they all land on my boat so this is a great thing to have you know if you s spray this spider away down what you want to do is you want to come in real and clean the area really well and then you spray it with the spider away and let it dry get it all in the cracks and crevices crevices and they won't and they won't come back they don't like the smell of this stuff it doesn't really smell to me but they, the spiders don't like the smell. And you know, if you, if you spray and then you, you know, see some coming back, uh, it's probably the ones that had hatched since you sprayed. And so spray again? So spray it again, and they will stop, they will stop coming around eventually. They don't like it at all. So all right. go to starbright.com. And you know, if you actually, if you, you do your spraying during the warmer months, because that's when the spiders are most active as well. As well. All so. right, good advice. Anyway, <laughs> got some uh, Eagle Claw Circle C hooks here. Um, those are the L197s there with the ring eye. Those are good for live bait or chunk bait. They're, you know, they got a very slight offset. They come in 10 sizes from number one, little tiny ones for, you can use for pompano, all the way up to eight aughts, you know, so, you know, you can catch big snappers and, <clears throat> and groupers on them. Great hooks. Yep. Also, we have some uh, L, L181 big BKUs. There's the bait holder hooks. Right. And these are made, you know, if you're using chunk bait or clams, they come with little barbs on the shank, so you can slide the bait all the way up onto the that shank and get the hook up onto, I mean, get the bait up on those barbs. Can you zoom in on that duck? And then they won't come off. Yeah, they, they, those, they got those little, the little barbs, barbs on the on shank. There? Yeah. That holds the bait on there. So again, slightly off, offset, yep. uh, good American steel. Those are a J-hook style, so, you know. You're going you're gonna to really stick them. Plus, all right. The plus, they're all laser sharp as well. Where do we go to get those? Those are EagleClaw.com. Or a local those. retailer. Exactly. Or you can go to EagleClaw.com Eagleclaw to find the, uh, the dealers. All right. Honestly, Dave, that spider away is probably the best gift that anybody could get. You can, yeah, I, yeah. So notice how she claimed I'm taking it. it. You, I would, you can take it. No, I'm going to. No, no. All right, let's get Matt Reed on the line and see what the Lower Fresh region has to offer us this weekend. Looks like you and Rick had a great time, Matt. I had a ball, and by the way, I don't do spiders either. See? <laughs> it's a good all-around gift. Father's Day's coming yeah, up, Yeah, me and Rick had a ball. We caught a ton of fish. Uh, oh, I just wish I'd have got him that true big old falcon special, but oh, it's, right. uh, it's always it's always a good thing when, when somebody says, man, I got a bruise on my side from setting the hook. That means <laughs> Absolutely. You he'll just have to come back. <laughs> I'm going to come back if you'll have me. All right, tell us about the bass, bub. Uh, uh, let's get it rolling. 
Dock and Lakes dishing out big numbers right now. Uh, get on the shallow rock points and throw a square bill crankbait in a chartreuse pattern. Or a Carolina rig soft plastic stick bait, and you can just load the boat with numbers. Uh, the only thing missing have been the true Falcon specials. But you do catch a few good ones mixed in every day. Uh, Mike Bates has sent me a report for Choke Canyon. Uh, still a solid morning bite, especially if it's cloudy. Those bass are super shallow. Spinnerbait, squarebill, and chatterbait have been, been the ticket. Uh, how long that bite lasts varies each day. Uh, depends on the clouds and such. Otherwise, get on the grass line to six to eight foot with a Texas rig uh, big worm, uh, catching a bunch that way. There's also a, a bite developing in 15 to 20 foot of water on the offshore humps and ledges. Uh, that's been producing some really big ones. Uh, top water bites still non-existent, he says. And normally there's one this time of year, but it hadn't formed. Uh, moving on over to Somerville, Greg Boyd sent me a report. Uh, they're biting well early on the shad spawn still happening there. Uh, throw a lipless crankbait or a small, small spinnerbait on those rocky shores. After the sun gets high, move out to the first drop off and throw a lightweight Carolina rig or a shaky head. Uh, green pumpkin and black have been the best colors for the plastic. Uh, Fayette County is coughing up solid fish along the reeds early in the morning. Uh, and on cloudy days, they're staying there longer. Uh, throw a, a chatterbait or a popping frog down the edges to generate a lot of strikes. Uh, a little later on, move out to the main lake drop-offs and road beds with a Carolina rig, stick bait, or fluke in that 10 to 20 foot range. Brian Cotter sent me some reports from the Austin area. Lake Decker still fishing real good. They're schooling in the discharge each morning. Uh, throw a really small swim bait, it matches the hatch. The shad are real small. Some days the hybrids are mixed in there and you just kind of have to wait on them to go away before your bass are going to cooperate really well. Lake Marble Falls, a uh, shallow crankbait like a square bill. Uh, they've been doing good, you know, up close, close to the bank. Uh, Ten-foot divers have been getting some bites out off the edge of the flats and on the ends of the docks. Uh, frog bites have been hit and miss, but it's a lot of fun when you can make it happen. Uh, after that morning dies, drag you, drag you a jig in that 8 to 20 foot to get you some good bites. Lake Bass Drop, they're still schooling some. Uh, and that's going to get better as it gets warmer. Uh, get you a clear top water. Uh, when they're up, throw it in them with a clear top water, work it real fast so they don't get a good look at it. Uh, you can also burn a crankbait through them to catch them. When they disappear, put a little swim bait on a lightweight ball head jig, throw it out there, let it go to the bottom, and then yo-yo it back. And that's the best way to catch them when they, when they go down. Got a picture there with Mike Bates with a great big Joe Canyon fish that he caught this week. Uh, huge. Wow. <laughs> huge. That's all you can say on that. I think that fish weighed just under 10 pounds. Nice. Man. All right, tell us about the uh, white bass, bub. Uh, the white bass. Falcon Lake white bass are stacked on the points. Uh, in fact, they're driving me crazy. There's so many of them while I'm trying to catch my regular bass. Uh, throw a shad imitation crankbait for non-stop action. Uh, like Somerville, the whites and the hybrids are also taking advantage of the shad spawn. Uh, get you a lipless, crank, lipless crankbait and a, a swim bait. Uh, they're in that 6 to 12 foot range on the main lake points. Uh, the schools roam, so you have to, you know, move around to keep up with them. The picture there is just a, just a picture of a bucket of typical white bass, and uh, that's always some good eating. Hey, Matt, I got a question for you. You know, what would be a good time if I'm going to come back? What would be a good time for me to come back? Well, my answer to that is there's not a bad time, Rick, <laughs> but that late summer fall time is some of the best uh, the best fishing and most consistent weather you can get into down here. Right. Uh, you know, that's that's the that's probably my favorite. Just and you know, it is going to be hot, but you do get most consistent weather, which sets the fish up to where they're more predictable. All right, bub, thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the FiberTech hotspots from the Lower Fresh region. He says that Choke Canyon, the bass are. The bass are been uh, showing out. There are er, uh, early spinner bait bite is very shallow as the day goes along. Get a Texas rig big worm and concentrate on the outside grass edges for lots of big numbers. <coughs> so Bree, let's take a look underneath this. Ooh. 
this old antique truck and see what kind of ponies we got under here. I think Let's it'd be kind of cool to show people what this motor is all about. Absolutely. You have to come so around. we got a th <laughs> yeah. 350 crate motor, all chromed out, dual uh, fans so we can keep the engine cool, ceramic headers with a turbo 400 uh, transmission. As you can see, it has air condition as well as power steering, as, as well as the power windows. So the only way you guys are gonna be able to get to be part of this is to buy a ticket. That's a nice looking undercarriage yeah, if I've ever seen one. <laughs> That's so what, what do you think? You There's some say? horsepower there, bud. Yes, sir. Looks very nice. Get well, your guys, tickets. Well guys, thanks for tuning in this week. We'll see you next week and happy Mother's Day. Yeah, Bree, happy Mama's Day. Thanks.